Hello everyone, welcome to the channel for everything Arsenal and right off the bat I have a question for you, comment down below your answer which of these formations do you prefer? Do you prefer the one that's on screen right now, a 4-2-3-1, the one that we usually play with four defenders, two holding midfielders, one number 10, one right winger, one left winger and one striker? Or do you prefer having a back three with three center backs, one left wing back, one right wing back, two holding midfielders, one can push forward, two strikers and one number 10, or if it's a 3-4-3, three, three, one striker and two other forwards either side of him. Which one do you prefer, a back four or a back three? So your answer was either a back four or a back three or you're not sure yet or depends on the kind of opponents you're playing or the kind of team we have now. I'm going to focus on the kind of team we have, the kind of players and personnel we have at Arsenal and you'll have your answer at the end. Now, let's start with the back four. Let's start with the game against Chelsea in preseason in the mind series where we lost 2-1. In the first half, we lost the ball so many times at the back and we were left in situations where it was four players against one, three against two. Most of the time, so many, so many openings for Chelsea. I'll put it on the screen right now. For example, in the first half, forget about the players up front. Let's focus on um, Tierney, El Nini, Partey, Holding, Chambers and Pablo Mari. Tierney was so far ahead on the left side, obviously, because we have the ball. is right to do that. Chambers as well is right to push up forward because we have the ball is now starting to attack. Party had pushed forward, El Nini had pushed forward and Rob Holding was kind of pushing forward as well and kind of following their striker. You know what I mean? He was kind of following the striker like man marking whether we have the ball or we don't have the ball. Go wherever Vana is going, go wherever Havertz is going. That is what he was doing. So we were left in a situation where Pablo Mari was the only defender at the back. Only Pablo Mari. As you can see, most of the time we were left up against Havertz, Pulisic and Vana. And it was not once. It was four or five times. Now, the problem with that, when holding pushes forward and we lose the ball in that position because I saw Party losing it once and I saw Holding losing it once. The moment you lose it there, Vana is in, Pulisic is in, Havertz is in and it's three against one against Pablo Mari. Three against one and that cost us the first goal with Havertz having such an easy finish. Last season at Stamford Bridge he missed it but this season, in a pre-season match, yes, he scored it. He actually did finish the chance. So, what is the danger of being left in that situation? A lot. You could concede five to six goals per game. If you lose the ball and you don't have quick players who can come back whenever you lose the ball, you can concede up to 10, 20 chances per half, maybe 40 chances per game. It could be a nightmare for you guys. And the kind of players we have right now, we cannot play with that tactic. Playing from the back with those players and also pushing for that match, including the center backs with those players, and you're left in that situation with three very, very quick players in Vanna, Pulisic and Havertz. Now, imagine you're up against De Bruyne, Sterling and maybe Harry Kane if he joins them. Or you're up against Rashford, Sancho and Cavani. You're going to be in a lot of trouble. Even, even against the Leeds, if you're up against Rafinha, Bamford and Harrison or Rodrigo, with their pace, you're going to be in a lot of trouble before you cover and you try to come back. Because Tien is already out of the game there. Chambers is already out of the game. El Nini and Pate are already out of the game because they've pushed forward. So that's the back four. What would have been the situation if we were using a back three? So let's try and replace one of the forward guys with Ben White. Let's say Ben White started the game yesterday alongside Holding and Pablo Mari. Now, all of a sudden it looks a bit better. Obviously not 100%, but a bit better now. Let's say Tini has pushed forward, Chambers, Pate, El Nini have all pushed forward and Holding as well has pushed forward now. Even if you have Harvard's Pulisic and Vanna, at least this time round we have a back two remaining. Because from a back three, if one pushes forward, you have two remaining. So in that situation, it's better than having one. In that situation, Pablo Mari and Ben White can communicate. Ben White can push to Vanna's side and maybe the ball will never even get to Harvard's. Or if you're playing the tactics the way I used to see Van Dyke playing, even if it's three against himself, he would still know how to cover it. If those two players against those three, 
it can still lead up to a shot but an easier save for Leonard than what it was yesterday an open shot for Harvard so for me personally if we are going to have the same players listen if we are going to have the same players and if we are going to use the same tactics in terms of playing the ball from the back and the defenders pushing forward that high when we have the ball Leno has the ball or Pablo Mari has the ball I think we have to use a back three and that is not just the reason obviously up front it could allow you to have a, 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 a two up front with Aubameyang and Lacazette instead of Aubameyang playing on the wing and defending most of the times yes I know playing a back four allows you to have a number 10 and a right winger for example Saka Smith throw both on the pitch and maybe playing a back five you could still have both of them on the pitch alongside Aubameyang but that would affect I know Pepe but if you're playing attacking wise you could have Pepe on the right you could have Saka on the left Smith throw up front uh, and just next to Pate and Aubameyang up front you'd still have those players and still a back five Cheney pushing forward and whichever player is going to play as a right back but if you're playing with the back four, I mean, when you lose the ball, the number of chances I saw us giving Chelsea yesterday in the first half, that is suicidal. That is suicidal kind of play. So if Atita wants to use the same players and the same tactics, I know Granit Xhaka will be in there. I know Ben White will be in there. All those players, I know Saka will be back and stuff. But we still have the likes of Holding. We still have the likes of Bellerin. We still have Chambers. We still have... El Nene in the midfield, we have to be using a back five. So that is just my opinion. So a couple of questions for you guys as well. Let me know if which which of these teams you'd have preferred yesterday. Team A with Tierney, Pablo Mari holding in chambers, the one that played yesterday. Or would you have preferred to see Tierney, Pablo Mari holding white and chambers? Which one would you have felt safer with in that team, in, in, in that um, stadium? in that pitch against Chelsea which one would have made you feel better because for me I do kind of prefer a back three I know the reasons of preferring a back four if we have different players listen if we sign Madison our war a 4-3-3 or a 4 2 one is definitely suitable for us but with the kind of players we still have I'm thinking a back five is for us because Kolasinac can defend Bellerin can defend hopefully those players would be here but let me know which one you prefer a back three or a back four uh, just overall and with our current players which one do you prefer which one should we play next season if we have the same players so make sure to smash the like button i'll do another video breaking down the back three and the back four in more detail so as of now thank you for watching keep staying safe and i'll catch up with you guys later